This is the Oakland Podcast, featuring Morgan Brown and Michael Yu. And welcome back to the Oakland Podcast. I'm Morgan Brown. Michael Yu. And I'm the Podfather. And we're here at the Oakland Podcast. <laughs> I know. Welcome. Uh, Brayden's actually improved his studio since the last time we've been here. Lots of wood. Pretty, yeah, lots mm-hmm. of wood. He was saying mm-hmm. that wood makes you feel more comfortable. What makes you feel the most comfortable? Mm. Like, what's your, what's your, what's your like home style? I like a good linen. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> I like linen. Yeah, <laughs> linen is just like a it's it's a breathable material. Isn't it yeah. like super stainy though? Like if you yeah. stain stuff a lot, <laughs> who doesn't stain stuff yeah. when they have kids? Yeah, linen. Just you know, linen is also one of the best, easiest clean cleaning really? things. Yeah, I would think linen is like no. It's just like it's linen. like a chocolate stain waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's chocolate, I swear. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my god! Now yeah. I'm gonna like look around like is there chocolate stains? <laughs> my son does like chocolate cookies, so he's all around it. But like that and slippers, I can't get in. I can't go into my house. Like I bring my slippers everywhere. It was oh, yeah? so funny. I it, you know what's funny? I slippers. like slippers. For Asian guy, I never wear slippers. That's weird. I've read Flintstone everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, me too. Yeah, because yeah. you you run hot. I run hot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same with Sean. He doesn't like slippers either. Yeah. He's like, but slippers are kind of, and it's funny. My cousin is the exact same. My grandmother is always the same, and my everyone always laughs at me. My cousin, who's very close to myself, he, she lives in Victoria. Mm-hmm. We're like a year apart. And my grandmother, the running joke in the family is that we all three have the same energy that's hmm. like kind of like crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And we all like need our slippers. It's like one of our things. <laughs> so, and I just sent her, <laughs> I have this, I just sent her a pair of slippers. Like, oh, really? I just sent my cousin a pair of slippers. She's like, I love you. Thank you. It's funny. Maybe it's a pro, like a PTSD thing, but like my grandparents used to spank me with a, their slipper. Oh my God. <laughs> They used to like take their slipper off and throw it at me or take their slipper off and spank me with it. This makes sense. That's this is why you don't wear slippers. Why you don't wear slippers. Uh, We're going to hide my slippers next time. That's too funny. The therapy? Couch. <laughs> what else happened to you, Michael? No. <laughs> so when Morgan's walking around with their slippers, I always like, I always flinch. What's your thing that makes you? You like like your joggers. Like you like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like you like to get into your like sweatpants. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sweatpants aficionado. That's what makes you feel yeah. comfortable? Yeah, I would say so. I think every nerd loves their sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. Do you, what, is there a specific color of sweatpants you like? Gray. Yeah, gray yeah. is everyone's favorite. Yeah. Gray sweatpants. Yeah, gray goes with everything. Yeah. yeah. Do you go out in your sweatpants? I do. Yeah. I have like a, it's funny, Pre just hates this. I have like a weekend uniform. Nice. <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's the same thing. Like I wear these gray sweatpants, my like, my little sneakers <laughs> and like, just some I like they're ner- little, yeah. they're little, <laughs> yeah. little like sneakers. The, little and just sneakers. like a nerdy t-shirt. It'll be a Star Wars t-shirt. A it'll yellow be a t-shirt. I've yellow <laughs> yeah. Hulk just t-shirt. It'll chocolate be like, stains on yeah. everything. <laughs> it's chocolate, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then that's it. That's so good. Yeah. What's your, what's your, what's your cozy thing? My cozy thing. Um, I've got, uh. I've got these like disgusting all painted up pair of shorts that I wear for all my like, <laughs> you know, cutting and painting right. and stuff. And sometimes I like to throw them on to be comfy. But I think uh, cozy, I would say like, um, I it used to be in like when I was growing up, it was always the forced air. I would sit on the heaters, on yeah. the radiators and stuff like that. But I don't have that. Uh, I haven't had that for years. And so I think it's gas fireplaces. Yeah. You know, it's just huddling around the gas fireplaces. Fire I was actually huge for me. Yeah. Huge yeah. for me. Mm. I think do, that's do my next that, one. Do you have that mm-hmm. fire? You have a fire pit in your like back pit, in your backyard. backyard. Yeah. yeah. Sean you get loves yours? it. Just Costco. I got to get one of those. Yeah. Costco is yeah. the best. And because like the weather's turning over now. And, and he stuff spends like that. so much, like Sean spends a lot of time out in the winter with it. Yeah. Like he'll just well, go out there and get listen to music. Yeah. <laughs> he really does. He really, really Ooh. does. Ooh. Listen yeah. up. Bird. I think that he would tell you. <laughs> I think that served. he would tell you right now <laughs> that he wished he was with me more these days because uh-huh. I've been with my kids a lot. So yeah. I think he's like, you know, like as a, as a woman, you know, like there's a, sometimes there's like a little bit of our priority thing. And I think right now he's like kind of needing me. You mm-hmm. can tell he's yeah. like, we should go on a date night. <laughs> I think that, you, but having like, have you not gone on a date night for a while? No, not with Lenny, which is oh, yeah? with, why? without with Lenny. Quinn, you did all Quinn, the time. we did all the time. Yeah. Why? Lenny's different. Lenny is like a very, I don't know. I feel like I have this, like my mom thinks I'm obsessed with my daughter. I love my daughter so much. 
<laughs> well, that look right there. Yes, yeah. you are obsessed. She's with like you this little cabbage patch kid. Yeah. She's so cute. It's like having yeah. like a little doll around you. <laughs> no, and I think it's just we both are very busy with work. No, he's especially busy with work because he's a he's started his own company. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I gotta spend some more time with my husband. Mm-hmm. You're Have the you, one that was like told me that you got to go know. on date nights every two yeah. weeks. I know. You're the one that actually I know. like. Take your own advice, Drill more. It yeah. in, man. Have you yeah. been going out for dates with your girlfriends then? Yes. Yeah, that's Hell why yeah. he's that's why he's missing <laughs> it, right? It, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. He's so good though to me. Like yesterday I was like, I need to get my nails done. He's like, go, I'll take Lenny. And I was like, yes. So I spent like an hour out of the house. Like he knows like he's he's good about it. But yeah, today, <laughs> today he gave me a hug and like it was like a long hug. <laughs> you know, you're like, you hold on. Like I'm just was like needing like that the, touch. He's like, I'm leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where this, this came on Morgan's last personal lifetime. Goodbye. <laughs> he, he is my best friend. So I think that's probably why he's missing just chatting with me, right? Mm-hmm. So we're funny. Anyways, I should listen to my own advice though. Yeah, You're right. That, I should do yeah, that. Because I listened to your advice, I, you know, Arlene was so nice and she asked like, hey, I'll take care of Soph one night. So Pri and I went out. Perfect. Yeah, for like a date, just uh, just the two of us. It was awesome. I can, I feel nice. like Arlene is the only, like Arlene is so, okay, the other day we were at North Vancouver. She just took my baby from me. And then all of a sudden Lenny just fell asleep. And I was like, yeah. what the hell? Arlene's a baby whisperer. She's a whisperer. Yeah, wow, that's She's amazing. She's so, like you, Arlene's energy is so calm. Like even when she's like, she's sometimes stressed with us, but in general, she's really like, you know, she's so calm. Like, and I think babies just like love it with yeah. her. Yeah. So we were like having lunch together and Lenny right. was just like on her, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, awesome. thanks. <laughs> Leading on. Yeah. I think it's funny too, because it's like free. And I were talking about who, who do we be able to leave yeah. our kid with? Right? Yeah. Like, and, uh, and we're like, oh, Arlene for sure. For sure. Morgan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have right. No, I know what you guys are like, she's already got her hands full. Yeah, she's got her hands full. Yeah. But it was, it, yeah, it's like. I would yeah. take your child though. Because I would totally, me and her are going to bond one day. It's going to be next level. We're going to be like, <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Because I think I she's going to be a lot like teach, me. I, I would love for you to teach Soph some so like, skills. You know, the thing is, is that because Morgan is so my like I think it's good to be exposed to different uh like role models you yes. know like not just your mom but like you know I've had role models outside of my parents as well and yeah. having like you know different energies and seeing different perspectives is so like it's so rewarding right I think that's a, this is a very Asian thing to say cuz I was like my parents we had so many aunties and uncles yeah. that were not aunties and uncles yeah we just call them we just call them auntie uncles and they literally are like auntie uncles like Mm -hmm. they're actually even closer with me than my own aunties and uncles like that's the that's and they like my auntie my auntie kathy who does like gordon fabrics she's so polar opposite than my mom she's not like a businessy person she's like kind of more spiritual and whatever Mm -hmm. and i had her around me all the time and i could literally if i were to think well, growing up, I would have called her if uh, something happened to my parents. Like she would have been my first really? call. Oh yeah. Mm. But she was so like totally less like my mom. She's like nothing like my mom. So I think it's good. Do you think you have like influences? Yeah. But the parent has to bring that around them, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think a lot of people insulate, you mm-hmm. know, like I've had a few friends that they have a kid and then it's like, whoosh, like they yeah. just like, they don't see anyone. They're just kind of like, it's just the three of us now. And then like they shut out the rest of the world. And uh, yeah, we... You can't yeah. do that, No, right? you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. you got to have yeah. Auntie Morgan pumping your tires. I'll be like, Sophie, well, I wanna, I'm yeah, going to like whisper in her ear. I'm like, you're magical. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful. You're smarter than most well, men. Like in Philip, like... <laughs> All men. It's, it's, <laughs> is it Tita Morgan? Tita. Tita yeah, Morgan. you call me Tita, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's, I think that's more appropriate for you. Yeah, Tita is like yeah. auntie. What's uncle then? Tito? Oh... I've never had an uncle. <laughs> I call them, I call them all my uncles are yeah. uncles. I don't know. I just call them, but Tita's are like aunties. Yeah. I like that. Like my nanny's for my kid is Tita. Tita Catherine, right? But they oh, all yeah. call her Tita. Yeah. She's so cool too. Like, I mean, yeah, you gotta have some Tita's, you gotta have some family. It takes yeah. a village. That's it. Right. Right. Totally, totally. What are we getting into today? We're oh, drinking we're tequila talking, right yeah, now, we're guys. Yeah, tequila. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we just get off track. Yeah. And- we got a little bit off, oh, off track. And speaking oh! of track, 
tracking. So we're talking about tracking your business we're today. We're all things tracking. Yeah. And you know what? This was, uh, I'll tell you a little story about myself and tracking. So like, um, you know, I, at first, when I first started, I just kind of had my head down and I just kind of was doing things kind of just, um, day all, by day. Yeah. Day by day living kind of in the moment and, you know, just kind of really, um, just, focused on lead generation essentially that's all i really did and and i did that for probably a year and a half or two years straight and uh, once i was able to track my numbers and things like that that really uh like revolutionized my business yeah um in terms of like what was actually delivering me the most results like i was actually spending so much time and energy on stuff that wasn't actually helping me to grow my business or even stuff that I even liked, but I just was kind of had my head down and was just doing it over and over again. And until I really tracked my numbers and found out what was the most effective, um, uh, you know, methods for me, like that's, that really helped to change you know things what? around. We were opposite. You were, you were like keeping your head down, just, just doing it mm -hmm. where I was trying, as you know, sure new things all the time yeah. to create new business. Mm -hmm. And I think as an agent, you kind of want to like, you're just like, you're trying to do new things to get more yeah. new business, but you're not focusing on the things that are actually giving you the business. Totally. So it's like, a, it's the same thing. Yeah. That mm -hmm. As you said, you were just keeping your head down and you, did, you just did whatever. For right. me, it was like, I was looking and doing other things, taking my focus away from what I wanted yeah. and came back in and said, hey, this is actually what's working for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then that changed a lot, right? I doubled my business within like a year. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's, yeah. a, so the, you know, this is a very powerful method. And I think not a lot of agents do this, a little bit of an audit uh, way to track your numbers. And we're going to get into that up next, tracking your numbers. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the Oakland podcast. We are so excited to see some of your reviews go onto your platform that you're currently using and rate us five out of five or feel free to put in that message box on the review what you'd like to hear from us. We would like to hear from you. If you are an agent from another office or curious about Oakland Realty, yes. feel free to go to oakland.com slash join. Right. And put in that message box pod 2021 for that action from us saying that you're going to get a free, beautiful mystery piece of Oakland swag um, feel free to enter that promo code right in that message box and one of our Oakland representatives or leaders will come in and focus on you. Welcome back to the Oakland podcast. <laughs> We're getting a little warm in here. <laughs> the tequila <laughs> we're drinking is kind of, it's like, it's a little bit warming. I'm like, it's a little bit. Yeah. Oh, well, nice. It's yeah, I got like a glow. You, everyone has a glow. This is I kind of nice. feel like I'm drinking like a hot toddy. Do you know what a hot toddy I hate hot toddies. What? A you were the one that told me to drink a hot toddy oh. in Whistler. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to try this. Morgan said it's the greatest. You don't, you like bitter, beverage. you like bitter stuff. That's yeah, why. That's I right. like sweet stuff. Yeah. It's just, see, I saw well, much. I know Michael. I know Michael <laughs> so well that I'm like, okay, I know what you want. You two are Ma so Matches yin. my personality. We're like a yin and a yang. So yin, yin, yang. We are yin and yang. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, You're we sweet. Are. I'm Bitter. Bitter. I'm, <laughs> you're rough. I'm bolished. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of dichotomy here. Um, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, we were talking about tracking the numbers. Okay. okay back to business here. Um, what can you track? Let's talk about the three things you can track. Sure. Yeah. So the first one is your commissions. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, kind of where to start is looking back. So, you know, if you haven't started reflecting on your 2021 or even your 2020, uh, you can look back at uh, your earnings for the year. Yeah. And um, something that really helped me uh, when I first got started. Um, so how do you track your uh, business? Is it in co gross commissions earned or is it deals. In deals? Yeah. So something that actually... Uh, number gave, of sales. Yeah. yeah. Number of sales. So that's a second thing to track as well. Uh, but something that really helped me was um, to not really think about the commissions too yes, much. And I know. kind of just review commissions. You know, for me, I only review commissions uh, once a year. Me too. Um, I don't, because I actually get a bit like freaked out about me it. Me too. I get freaked out. I don't, and I feel like people that, this is like some people that like track their commissions, they get to a point where they're like, oh, they've made enough. And then they just are like flat. Do you know what I mean? Like with commissions mm -hmm. where... I don't want that to be the reason why I'm doing this business. No. I want to do it so that I'm helping as many people as I humanly yeah, possibly I'm can. I'm kind of like McDonald's. Like 
So number of people served. <laughs> yeah. Under the sign. Nice. Like number of people yes, served. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm not the McDonald's of real estate, though. <laughs> In other things. Um, but uh, yeah, I think... So for me, um, you know, but understanding your gross commissions earned is going to help to, you know, understand, um, you know, your average um, price per sale. Um, and yes. then that can kind of dictate how many sales you need to do within the year to kind of, um, you yeah. know, to achieve the goal that you have for yourself. That's exactly it. So the commissions, number of sales, and then we also track prospects and closing versus yeah. vers versus closing, right? So something that I track very closely is my prospects. Mm -hmm. So your pipeline, your prospects, people that are going to... I define a prospect as a uh, seller or a buyer, but mm -hmm. let's focus on... Let's think about sellers here that is going to likely sell their property in the next three or six months, uh, within the next three to six months that have uh, contacted you and have shown interest in using your services. So mm -hmm. like these are people that you're going to follow up with on a regular basis. And what you want to track is your, um, uh, what we call a closing percentage. Yep. So the number of uh, actually uh, listing prospects that you get in one year versus the number of closed listings you've had in a year is going to show your uh, closing ratio. So that could be one out of five. It could be one out of three. It could be one out of two. It could, you know, I have an age, we have an agent in the office that's like one to 1.1. 1. 1. Like it's like I, basically it's really like crazy. super high. I'm like, yeah. holy cow. Like every time he gets a lead, it's like done. Closing. And so it's all high quality What is leads. yours? <laughs> mine is, mine is about 1 to 1. 1.5. So like, oh, yeah. Okay, so it's bad. pretty, pretty, yeah. I, I'm very lucky. Uh, it's pretty high. And are these like cold prospects? Now they were, so when it was cold prospects, it was more like one out of five. Yeah, I think so. Um, when it was yeah. cold prospects. But I've kind of, by doing the tracking in the business, I realized where um, my profit center was for my business. And we'll talk about profit yeah. centers. We'll talk about how to find out what your profit center is mm -hmm. through a series of questions in your business. Um, and so I really only do the high yield activities now. So when I do get a listing prospect, it's basically a referral, someone I know. And, you know, yes. basically kind of so... Yeah. So that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about yours? Um, I'm the same, exact same as yeah. yours. Yeah. But it was it was a lot lower percentages when I first got started. Cause for the most part, a lot of my listing leads came from open houses and yes. came from uh expired listing uh uh came from flyer calls, came from that type of activities. Yeah. I feel like just on a side note, everyone just during this COVID time. People right now are like yearning to meet new people, like especially in the public side of yeah. things for prospects. Right. So what I found with is a lot of my team, they're out doing showings and then they'll meet someone down the hallway and they'll pick them up right away. Right. Just, as a little tip for people that are prospecting, go out there and just meet as many people around what you're showing as possible because the likelihood of you making a connection is very high these days because they're not... Um, there's just a lot of people that are looking to do real estate business and they yeah. there's not enough realtors, it seems, connecting with them. Right. Yeah. There's not a lot of proactive agents yeah. out there. A lot of agents are very reactive um, and kind of, you know, taking a kind of a, a reactive role. Um, but I think, so a, a hot tip for me that, I, that mm -hmm. I've had uh, when uh, I was building my uh, real estate business was um, I always showed up to doing a showing. I always showed up half an hour early. And because I classically yeah. always show up early anyways, I would wait in the lobby of the properties and I would say hello to every single human being that walked through the lobby. And I... People were like, who's this random saying hi to me? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. I, so there's one building in, in particular that has a kind of in Richmond that has like a bit more of a grander lobby. And I just hung out there all the time. It was where I got my first listing. And... I ended up, you know, I don't want to be braggy yeah, or anything, mm -hmm. but on that street, I sold over a hundred homes. And I amazing? think I met a significant proportion of those people in that lobby. And your clients to the to, to today. Today, yeah. And we've upsized them from that small wood frame condo in uh, uh, Richmond to, you know, I've advised them to buy a townhouse and then go to single detached, buy investment properties. Isn't that great? And kind of like, you know, I've become one of like, you know, one of the, you know, the key members of their, of their team in, in, in a sense. And so it's been, it's been a lot of fun. And 
you know, I think people do have that yearning, like as, as you're saying, they're to yearning. connect. Yeah. They're yearning mm-hmm. to connect right now. It just seems like that. So I, I think one thing I do um, when I sell a property, I'll kind of write a handwritten note to the neighbor saying your neighbor just sold for 2.5 million or whatever it is. I get more p- people calling just to say hello and to talk. Right. Just because they're just wanting that connection mm-hmm. than anything. So I, that's one of my tips is like, and you know, you can start, go there early, meet people in the lobby, right. but also it's about the aftermath. It's the post of post sale of the properties that do sure. huge yep. business. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about some business profit centers, some business analytics. So some of the things that we should be, that people tracking. should be tracking yeah. is how we do the business, yeah. so, how you got the clients. Yeah. So when we're looking at our yearly, um, you know, our, our yearly result, let's say we're looking at 2021, let's say we sold 10 or 15 or 20 homes. Mm-hmm. We'll look at each of those sales and we want to find out how we actually got uh, connected with that client yes. that has closed. So, you know, that could be through your sphere of influence. It could be through a referral. It could be through, mm-hmm. um, uh, it could be through uh, an open house. So you want to find and track specifically where you got that client because that is a key um, uh, target to to decide how we're going to prospect the next year. Yes. So if ninety percent of your business came from sphere of influence, your uh, and referral, you need to spend ninety percent or more of your prospecting time on that activity. On the, yes. And you're probably only spending ten or fifteen percent of that time. And so yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a, key that's a huge key, yeah. key referral. So how are you getting this business? That's a big one. And who are you getting the business from? That's a yeah. big one as mm-hmm. well. Having, what is the demographic of the client? So are they going to be like Mike's clients where they're kind of a little bit more blue collared and mm-hmm. they're professionals that are rising up the ladder in real estate? Or are they going to be a more of a young professional? Or is it going to be someone that has lately, what I've been seeing is a lot of people selling to the 65 year boomer. Who are the clients? Right. right? So you want to analyze who your clients are. So I've there's a, everyone can do this a bit differently. Uh, I've kind of uh, looked at four different types of uh, clients. One is a first time home buyer. The second would be a upsizer. So someone that's upsizing and so, uh, second, the third would be a downsizer mm-hmm. and the fourth would be an investor. So like you want to, you can kind of segment those people and then your messaging, your uh, should go towards kind of like a personal demographic. So that would be like, you know, for myself, more family orientated uh, uh, messaging. So your language for your business should be in that kind of form and fashion. But if you're in that professional setting, it should things should be a bit more sleek and condensed and simplified and and so on. Yeah, it's great. And then what are the type of product that you're selling? Is it a condo? Is it a townhouse? Right. Is it a house? Is it a pre-sale? Um, that's definitely a huge part of what I do is figuring out what what I'm selling. Yeah. Because that can really just target what your kind of niche is. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, this all get, boils down to like where you want to put your resources and mm-hmm. energy. So like, you know, we've had um, uh, a lot of uh, agents, you know, we had an agent here. Um, I think he shared a story about... Um, you know, he was into the condo market and then he sold this like giant house and then he spent all his efforts on trying to chase another giant house for sale. And it kind of didn't, and he kind of ignored yes. his bread and butter, which <gasps> was know. the, like his downtown condo market, uh, activities. And basically, you know, that didn't work out so well because 90% of his profits were coming from this effort. And, you know, even though he was wanting to do something different, it kind of, um, it, 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 uh, it didn't work out so well over a period of time. So really understanding what you're selling, uh, something that I track a lot is listing to buying ratio. Like how many listings do you have to how many purchases you're working with? Um, and that so, should be, yeah, definitely in your track for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, a classic, um, you know, if we look at the red book, <laughs> the, yeah. the, uh, so the million in, dollar, in the million listing. dollar listing mm. book, very important um, to read it's, that book. It's uh, 66 to 75 percent of your business should be in the listing category mm-hmm. um, because it's a more efficient sale and it uh, it allows for more promotion. It allows for a bit. So basically, since I've started in the business, I've always just focused on prospecting for listings. Yeah. Um, but you know, everyone has their has their way. Yeah, for sure. And lastly, where are you getting this business? Oh, no, when are you getting this business? And then where are you getting the business? Sure, yeah. So when are you going to get the business? Is it in what quarter? What is the peak quarter of time? So for instance, this year, this year for my team was in May, April, May, mm-hmm. where they did a majority of the business. And uh, when can everyone take a vacation is what my clients are, what my team is always asking. 
Where is it that it's a dead spot? Yeah. Which is usually August for us. Yeah. So when you're exactly. So yes. when you're reviewing your business, uh, if your business shows trends of being seasonal, so like. You know, there's been many a December where I've stayed here. I'm like, I'm going to focus and work. And then like nothing happens. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I could basically, for my business, I rarely sell property in December. So I can essentially, I can plant a few seeds, but that's essentially all I can do in December. Um, and, you know, and this is over a 15 year tracking period. So yeah. like, you know, that's when I go on vacation. I've taken three and four weeks off at some times in, in yeah. December. Um, Called them YOLOs, YOLO days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, but tracking this will help you to understand when is it appropriate to take breaks and when you need to be here and on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then where are you getting it? Where is the, what region? So some yeah. people it's in specific communities. So sure. it could be North Vancouver. It could be in the Westland areas. It could be in Fraser, East Side, Vancouver. Where right. is it that majority of your business is coming from and to? That's another thing. We always track the other two as well. Sure. Where is it going? which a lot of our clients are moving in different directions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And this is going to shed light by having this uh, data. It's going to shed light on a lot of parts of your business and where yeah. to expend your efforts. Because basically we're kind of coming up to, you know, the last quarter of, the, well, we're in the last quarter of the year and we're also looking at planning for the next year. And if we're going to be proactive in our business and proactive mm -hmm. in planning, we can start thinking about, you know, some changes that we'd like to make with next year's prospecting plan or next year's business plan. So that will be fun to talk about things to learn how to track things. Yeah, and track. And I, I find that a lot of if you have if you work on a team, which I know a lot of people are listening on podcasts that are thinking of join building a team out. This is a great way to keep everyone connected. Um, I personally have like a like a spreadsheet that goes that we put into all of the the closing dates and the subject dates and everything. Yeah. And it enables everyone to be on the same page. Yeah. If you listen to we had we had a podcast yeah. a while ago with Ken Leong. My God. Um, and he talked about his master list of tracking his business. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so good. And you know, it can you take from it? Oh yeah. I did too. For sure. I took from it as well. Yeah. So I yeah, so Ken's uh pod Ken and Mary's podcast is, you know, some I don't know which episode it is, but that was really uh, you know, it's it's so it's so isn't it so refreshing to like have, know that he's what? Yeah, to have like agents in our office that are that like open and willing to share oh, and like just, it's what makes Oakwin. Yeah, it really totally. is, and it, it is one of the things that people are just willing to share, and also just see be, be so bold about. You know what I mean? And right. talk about it and say, hey, this is where I screwed up. Don't screw up there. Yeah, do this right away. Right. You know that's what I love about it. <laughs> They've already done their trial and error for yeah. us, so it's great. Yeah, people, it's funny because some, like I talked to a couple other owners of brokerages and like you do a podcast and you like tell everyone what you guys do. I'm like... <laughs> Transparency is the name of the game. Yeah, and I feel like this is the kind of the future, right? And 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 yeah. not just the future. I, you know, I think it's a comfortable way of, of doing things. For sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. no, I think that's great. And so for people that are thinking of just tracking their business, you can do it about many different ways. So just some key takeaways here for effects of tracking your real estate business is... One, how are you getting the business? Who are you getting the business from? What type of business you're selling? So condos, townhouses, pre-sales. When you're getting it the most business. So what are your peak quarters? When can people go away? And where are you getting that business? Track your commissions, your number of sales, your prospects versus closing. You should have a beautiful spreadsheet after this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're not a... And it's funny. If you're not a... Uh, a um, an Excel spreadsheet master like me, I actually do all my tracking on a piece of paper. So like, it's not big. I know this is a big, so insane. yeah. So I do all my tracking for my business and, um, on, on paper. So I list like, it's funny. Um, Bridge and I have a list of every closed buyer on our book and, and also on every closed seller uh, on our book and the addresses and then we like write down where we get them. And oh, then, I love that. And then I just tally it all up at the end of the year. I'm looking at mine right now actually because I haven't looked at mine for a while. It's called the Team MBA Vault and mm -hmm. we have a tab. I'm trying to give people tips but we have a tab that's like all of um, our current prospects. So what buy, who's buying and selling mm -hmm. in the next and upcoming and then we have our 2021 client list. So the ones that we've, our new clients, so we add it mm -hmm. to a client list of like whatever, how many clients. And then we have a call sheet for possession dates. So pretty much like all the call names of everything. Mm -hmm. Then we have a sales tracker that tells us like exactly 
like how many deals we've done that whole year. Mm -hmm. And then we have a prospect That's a lot traffic. of deals there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good year. <laughs> and, when uh, can I have a loan? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a... Mike's already asked me for one. <laughs> no, no, just joking. And then, um, I need a bag. And then we it's have a for tracker. Surgery, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, everyone get organized. We look forward to having an incredible you know, end of the year and we're going to keep it going for, for uh, 2021. Um, if you guys would like to speak to one of our representatives. Sure, or learn more about Oakwind. Feel free to go to oakwind.com slash join and put into that message box. Odd 2021 and you'll receive a free piece of mystery swag. And if you did enjoy this podcast as well, do us a favor and write us a little review and rate us five out of five. You guys, do that now. Yeah, do right that right now. now. Yeah, right now. Like, now. I need them now. Well, like, get off <laughs> this podcast and shut it down. Yeah. And put it on the review, okay? <laughs> exactly. And share with us your feelings because we really need the. Uh, yeah, yeah, tell us that you love us. We need to get we need, some... we need to get pets. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, need to get yeah. Petted. We need that uh, ego boost, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> totally. so much for joining us. And till next time. Okay, till next time on the Oakwood Podcast. Thanks so much for listening to us. Bye bye. Bye.